music lovers, and welcome once again back to the woodshed. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Andre Nieri. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, guys. <laughs> How's it going, Andy? It's been a while, dude. You just disappeared from planet Earth, man. Come on. I know. What happened um, to you? There's been this little, uh, little, little C-word virus making its rounds. We're all locked in at home, and everybody's stuck, stuck at their uh, do- domiciles or whatever, yeah. and uh, having well, to make make content from home. <laughs> at least we can't play, we can play the guitar, right? Can you imagine if we couldn't play the guitar? I mean, oh man, that would be, you know, that would be the end of the world. That would literally be the end of the world for. Yeah, I, I would be okay with understanding at that point. Um, so for those that don't know, Andre and I met, I would say several years ago at one of the, uh, surf factory events. And then the following year, Andre played at the surf factory event. Uh, I think that's somewhat correct. Andre has always been on my radar as a great player. Um, Andre, you're, you are from Brazil. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. What town are you from down there? And how did you get to the U S um, I'm from I'm I'm from the state of São Paulo because you know we have the city of São Paulo and the state of São Paulo, so I'm in kind of in the countryside of the state. It's not really São Paulo city, but it's kind of it's 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 close enough, and um, so that's where I'm from, and that's where I'm now actually, because you know oh. I I was living in LA, and because I you know all of this pandemic and stuff. I decided to go back. Yeah. Because I was doing nothing at all yeah. in LA, man. Yeah. Well, like there's, everything there's no shows, is online. No yeah. Everything and for those, went online. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Uh, little uh, before we talk about uh, what got you to the States, I want to tell everyone uh, you've played with Virgil Donati. You've been his guitar player for quite some time now. And uh, that, is a, that is a gig that requires a ridiculous amount of of musical firepower and uh you're 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 one of the most technically proficient players uh that i have ever seen and and it's not and it, and it goes without uh you know a lot of guys that have technical proficiency i kind of lose identity because once you get so far into technique it's like things get a little homogenized right but somehow you not only have this ridiculous high ceiling of technique but you've incorporated so much finger style and so much of your own personality and your own DNA in it that it's it's instantly recognizable to me. Um, your 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 tone and your your touch and your sound. Um, so, man, if you would give our viewers, our woodshedsmen, uh, a, a background on how you got started in in guitar, what took you to electric guitar, how did you end up um, doing the gig at Sir? And then how did you end up playing for Virgil? And then how did you end up teaching at MI? Like, give us the rundown on, on kind of your, your, your timeline. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you very much for the kind words. You know that it's, you know, I think the same thing of you. You know, you're one of the uh, best players in the world. Uh, actually, we met in 2014. I'm kind of good with, with years, you know, like yeah. dates and whatnot. So we met in... In 2014, actually, um, no, I'm wrong, actually. We met in 2015 at NAM. At NAM. Uh, it, actually, it, it wasn't at NAM. It was at the, uh, at the Sur, at, at the Sur Factory Party. But, you know, uh, uh, then we, uh, we, we actually went to NAM together. And then the year after that, uh, 2016, we played together. That's right. At the Sur Party. That's right. So that was it. And uh, all right, so little background story for you guys. So I'm from this town in the, in the countryside of, of Sao Paulo State. And then, so I started playing at around when I was nine years old because at that time it was around like 90, like 96. And uh, MTV was the thing back then, at that yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I remember like watching all these bands playing, uh, like performing and whatnot, like Metallica and Nirvana, uh, Pearl Jam, and all these all these other bands. And like as soon as I as I as I saw those those bands on the TV, I was like, dude, this is what I want to do for my life. 
you know, like having all those guys playing guitar, you know, like with those, you know, huge amount of people watching them. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to, you know, I want to be on stage and, and playing in front of other people. So that's where it all got started. And uh, so from that on, so I started uh, on the acoustic guitar first. And then uh, and that's nylon so for, acoustic guitar, right? In, in Brazil, most most acoustic players play nylon. See, out here in the woods in Tennessee, every everybody plays steel string Martins and dreadnoughts and stuff. Yeah, it's it's very different. Yeah, yeah. And I can't I can't play that. I can't play that instrument. You know, every time I pick, you know, I I I pick up uh, in like you know. What what's the what's the name of that? You know, it's I don't I don't know about names. What's I, the name I mean, of, like what's the name of that instrument? Like the uh, the just a steel string acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To me, it, it like it, around here we all just call it acoustic guitar in the states. Um, but I guess uh, to be more specific, uh, it would be considered a dreadnought style guitar. Dreadnought. Yeah, it's dreadnought. That, that's yeah. Like so uh, big Martins and Gibsons, like that's yeah. like the bluegrass thing and the country thing is the dreadnought style. And traditionally, uh, grass guys play like thirteens, play very very heavy string gauge on it. I always get get like confused, man, because you know it's it's acoustic guitar, but they're they're different. They're different right. acoustic guitars. So you know every time I get I get confused. It's not it's not classical. It's not you know. I guess it's not the gypsy I say, jazz you know, guitars, like, you know, this, yeah, like it's not the gypsy jazz Selmer guitars, and that's a different kind of thing too, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And, and on those, the, the, they have the dots in the wrong spot. It, whenever you play, like the, they're like moved over a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so I started with that kind of acoustic guitar, which we don't know the name. It's like Brazilian acoustic guitar, or something like that. And, uh, but. I was playing that that instrument because I didn't have any electric guitar in in my house because I wanted to play guitar you know I, I wanted to play electric guitar but we didn't have any uh, any uh, any guitar at home at that time so I was playing guitar stuff on the acoustic guitar you know have you ever done that yeah, like yeah, yeah. playing all the like, like bending strings and whatnot. Yeah. Dude, it's it's a pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, <laughs> literally, yeah. So uh, eventually, at around when I was twelve years old, so I got my first guitar, like real guitar, and uh, and from that on, so I, you know, I started like having lessons with uh, local, uh, like local guides and whatnot. And uh, when I was eighteen, I went to this conservatory in 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 Sao Paulo cool so i had this very strong rock background you know but at the same time i had these other influences like i i love jazz i love fusion i love blues i love like brazilian music but my background you know my roots are rock and roll so i kind of consider i considered myself being like a rock guitar player with a huge array of other influences and uh, that's how I kind of described myself. And, um, and that was it. And uh, in 2011, I, uh, I shot my first video for YouTube. So that's where, you know, all of this social media thing started for me uh, back in, in, so it's, it's almost like 10 years ago. Yep. Right. Yep. And uh, at that time, so do you remember those uh, guitar contests? At oh, that time? yeah. Um, there was there was one that Tom and Rick did way back in the day, and and there was one held out of England. I remember, and they were kind of it was like a it was short lived, right? Like like the guitar online guitar contest thing. Uh, it seems like there was like a ton of them for like a couple of years, and then they didn't I mean, like, and then they kind of nobody does them anymore. You know what I mean? And I I think I know why because back then, so there was no Instagram. Back in the day, you know, back then there was no Instagram. So the only way you could find about other players was through all these all these contests. You know, yeah. so you would get to meet other 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 guys. Uh, when you, you know, you would join all these contests and you would see like all these other players, you know, 
playing their ass off and you would be you would like become friends with them right uh, like like today it's a different story so you have instagram you have you know where you can find your other players on the fly you just go to your uh you just you just type like guitar and you know a bunch of players just show up and uh i think that's the reason why i don't know i i do wrong but that's my that's my theory and um so so i was lucky enough to win like i, I think i won like six of those contests and uh so that's how everything kind of got started for me so i kind of uh it it, it all started there because oh you know i was like oh you know so maybe so i'm winning all this contest and maybe i can go on with this you know maybe i can i could i can do this for a living so maybe i can you know i can make this happen and that's where it all all this started and it 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 ended up uh with me uh winning the guitar idol in 2014. that's the so one that's i was trying to that think was of. my yeah. last yeah that was my last contest all right and that was it so i was like dude i'm done with with contests now come on i gotta you know i gotta do something else i gotta go on tour and whatnot and uh, uh it like strangely enough like after guitar i also i was i was called for this gig with virgil and what so you know one one step after the other yeah and uh so that's how everything got started for me so because of social media so social media uh youtube facebook and you know like uh shooting videos for these platforms and whatnot that's how i kind of got started and that's why we're all here right now right? yeah 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 social media yeah and uh, that's how virgil actually um so he knew about me so you know he uh he watched uh some of my videos on youtube and he thought that i, I would fit his band well so he you know, you know, everything was because social media, man. Everything in in my career, you know, was because social media. Yeah, I want to talk about the virtual thing, but before we do that, there's some things that uh, I I hear in your playing that make you super unique uh, and, and and make your music and your your sound, Andre. One one of the things is how cleverly you sneak the pick in and out of your fingers to do finger oh, yeah. things, right? Another thing that you incorporate is uh, this extremely well articulated arpeggiation uh, of of chords, and there's several videos of, of of it out there. But instead of sweeping or hybrid playing, you you tuck the 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 pick in. Man, where did where did that thing come from? Were you playing arpeggios finger style first, and then started becoming a flat pick guy later? Like, how did you develop that really unique technique? Yeah, so the 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 technique itself, it's it's not anything new, right? It's just finger style, you know, is the same uh, technique as all the acoustic like classical guitar players use. So yep. it's not new. It's yep. it's not something new. But I think I don't really know where I kind of started doing this, like where in my life I started doing this. Because this is how that's it goes, what right? that's what I'm saying. So like the technique in itself itself is not new, and it's something we've heard guys do, Scobia, whoever, like arpeggiate, pocket Lucia, yeah. whoever, right? But what I'd never heard, uh, at least in my life, uh, I'd never heard an electric player play electric guitar with high gain and distortion and in a fusion yeah. setting and rock setting with that technique. And you talk about you you were you know tucking it in. You didn't really know where that came from. So you were playing finger style before you were playing flat pick and you brought the pick into your playing? Yeah, so I I think I know where I got this from because when I started having uh like uh, when I started uh taking lessons with with my first teacher uh when I was 12 years old. So he was a jazz guy and he would he would tell me to play rhythm with the fingers and solo with the pick. So I think that's how I kind of unconsciously started doing this. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're playing jazz and you want to play the chords with the fingers and you want to solo with the pick. So I kind of unconsciously it would tuck the, the, the pick in, in the pinky. I think that's how I got this from. 
because you know i don't i actually don't remember man like honestly i don't remember when i started doing this but that might might have been a reason and um and you use your nails correct you use the nails on the fingers yeah yeah okay yeah because because here in brazil we have this like it's it's a very strong tradition in classical brazilian acoustic guitar you know so i'm a i'm a huge fan of that so i started playing the acoustic guitar the, you know the brazilian acoustic guitar when i was like around uh, like 13 years old uh and we used use the finger so there's no pick involved mm -hmm. So since I'm a huge fan of this instrument and the technique as well, I kind of, you know, maybe I can use that. I can, I can use some of my uh, technique, some of my acoustic guitar technique into my electric guitar thing. So over the years, I was like, you know, what, what can I do to make it happen? And, uh, so I was like, oh, maybe I can solo using overdrive and, you know, playing with the fingers. So how would that go? So it took me a while to really understand how that, that could be done. And uh, playing the arpeggios was, was the way to go because since we have four fingers, so it makes sense to use arpeggios in four strings, right? So you just play, you just, you just, uh, you just position each, um, each finger on each string and you have this very different kind of arpeggiating thing where you know if you use the pick we usually play like in groups of three strings right yes like or in two strings whereas with the fingers you you can do that with four strings would you mind to so grab you your can... guitar and, and show yeah it? sure yeah yeah uh and that's one of my favorite sirs out of all the sirs that I've ever seen built. That's one of my favorite ones. Oh man. So when you're, when you're doing this technique, um, break down for us, uh, like a ba a very basic, maybe a minor seven or a major, yeah. major chord, what, whatever, whatever's convenient here. Sure. So most guitar players, when they think of arpeggios, they think of something like this, like a D minor seven arpeggio, right? Yes. Like the root, and then minor third, fifth, and minor seventh. Yes. Now, when you're using the, the fingers, though, so you have four fingers, so it makes more sense to use four strings and not three. So what I can do here is I can move up. I mean, I can move, move down, right? Uh, the first note. So instead of playing the first note, which is which is D, on the A string. I want to play that note on the E string. Okay. Right? So I'm just moving up one note. And so what that gives me is this is this four yeah. four string pattern. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I would play the first note with the thumb, the second note with the index finger, the and then the 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 third note with the middle finger and then ring finger. Yeah. So I would go like like back and forth, you know. Yeah. And uh, so here's the thing. He, here's the catch. So the right hand here is not as difficult as the left hand. Yeah, because if you play it like in the acoustic guitar, it's, right, it's gonna sound like a chord. So right. you really have to like perfectly mute all the notes. So yeah, yeah. So this is the hard part. It's not. It's not even the right hand. It's the left hand. So. Yeah. Right? Yep. Because the right hand, once you get it moving up and down fast, that's it. You know, once you get like. It's done. Yeah. Now, the left hand is where, you know, all the problems uh, 
start to appear because you have like all all the lines and whatnot and the muting is very difficult that's where you know i think most of the other you know most people they they really suffer is is actually on, on the left hand like um there's this other uh kind of line i, I play uh which is i think it's it's the line that you like uh, where I go, you know, I kind of travel across the neck. Oh yeah, I, it's, it's, it's 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 the, I've stolen that one and used it many times. Uh, yeah, talk yeah. about that one where it's like you'll out, you'll do like a uh, like a minor nine. <laughs> that, that kind of. Like. Yeah. So the way I, I ended up doing it was like uh, using a bunch of mutex, so I never had to get rid of the pig. <laughs> So yeah, walk us through how you do that the real way. Okay, so again, guys, so this is gonna be a group of four strings, okay? So I'm gonna, let's say that we're playing uh, D minor seventh again. So D minor seventh arpeggio, okay? And uh, I'm gonna play that arpeggio across the neck and I'll be adding extensions, okay? So I'll, I'll be adding like the second or the fourth or, or, or the sixth and whatnot. Okay, so, I'll be playing uh, the first string, which is actually we're gonna play is is the A string. So we're gonna start on D on the on the A string, and then we're gonna hammer on to the third, which is F, right? So two notes, but we're just hitting it once, okay? And then next string, we're gonna play the fifth with the index finger and then next string it's the it's the minor seventh with the middle finger and then next string is the is the minor third again now with the ring finger okay so it's root minor third fifth minor seventh and minor third thumb index middle ring And when you go back, you just hit it once, but you, but you pull, so you, you, you hit, you pull off and you hammer on. So this is, uh, this, this, like, like by itself is already an exercise, right? You can just keep going back and forth. Okay. Once you do that, now you can extend that uh, that um, arpeggio, starting on um, starting on other other notes of your arpeggio. So you can start now on the minor third. So, you so just that would be the minor third stack. Yeah. Yeah. Then the fifth, seventh. And then you can add. Yeah, you can do that. But since this is a very like weird kind of shape to play, you can add some extensions here. So instead of going to the root here, you can go to the second, right? And then on the B string, you can either go to the minor third, so. Or the fourth. Oh, that would be hard to play standing up. <laughs> No, it's not because you can you don't you don't need to like keep your fingers like yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. You can just go with the flow. Yeah, you can do that so you can go like with the flow, you know? Yeah. It's still like sometimes when you're playing standing up and the guitar is way down here, it's hard to get it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I know. Play like a rocker. <laughs> yeah, this is why you know like players like Slash they would, you know, they, they would play like that, you know, they, because it's 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 easier all right so if you know if it's too far from you from your room you can play the fourth so instead yeah. of going to the minor third you can go to the fourth so and it's a great sound like that right there would be a great sound over a d minor chord yeah so we can go and then from this note you can slide up so Yeah. Right? So that's, that's how I get that sound. Yeah. And then, 
from this point, again, now we're going to start on a fifth and do the same thing, but starting on a fifth. So fifth, minor seventh, and then I can go to the second. I can go to the second, to the fourth, to the fifth. Yeah. So you can kind of pick and choose whatever uh, extension you want to add, right? Or you can go. Yeah, you're gonna outline like that. And so for those guys that aren't using their fingers, the way uh, a, a shortcut would be to hammer on like Andre's doing it. And then I use my middle finger. system by not using my fingers but, but, but hanging out with you makes makes me want to explore that the, the finger aspect of it man that's killer yeah because so you good. can actually skip strings when you're right. using the, the fingers you can skip strings which is really hard to do when you're using the the the, the pick you know you can go like you can you, you, you can do yeah you know yeah and i would have to add another hybrid in there yeah i would have to use another finger on the hand to do it it yeah. sounds different it you sounds know, it super sounds different. different yeah mine sounds more like a bubbly roll and yours sounds very precise and articulate. yeah 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 it's a yeah you can you can go like yeah you know, so so beautiful man Beautiful man. Get, that's that's get tragic. more again. So uh right so yeah oh beautiful and uh so it's very it's it's smooth and you can hear all all the notes so that's that that's what I go for. And uh, that kind of became a kind of signature line. For sure. And, and people love it, man. So I oh, just, yeah. you know, I, I make sure that I play that line in every solo. It's, it, it's it. so good, man. It's so good. So speaking of that kind of thing, um, man, what was it like when, when you started working with Virgil? His music is obviously of, of a high in, intellectual uh high challenge you know very a lot of time signature fluctuation and my, metric modulation things like that what was it like when you started working with virgil and uh touring with him and playing playing live out with him dude it was a shock for me man it was like i was uh deeply impacted by that kind of music because uh i i had never played with such a with with a guy like him before you know, so he was my first like number. Like he's a he's like a top ten drummer in, in the world. You know. Yeah, for and, sure. And um, so when you play with musicians like him, it's different. Yeah. And you feel it. It you know the first note he plays on the drums, the first hit, it's different, and you can tell like right away that you're like, oh my god, man, I, you know this is gonna be hard for me. And, uh, but the, it was, it was kind of, it was tough because I only had like two weeks to learn and, and memorize 12 songs. Yeah. that's And tough. for those of you who don't know who he is, like, dude, it's kind of a dream theater meets fusion, you know, in that sense. So n not only you are, you have to learn the songs, but you, you know, you you have to solo over the changes yeah so you you have to have you know the technique to be able to play the songs and not only that you need to improvise over all all the changes so that was tough for me so in you know uh in those two weeks i had no social life whatsoever you know like from like i don't know like from 8 a.m to 1 1 a.m you know like like trying to memorize all the songs so it was it was hard but it wasn't uh it was the like 
the hardest challenge I've ever had in my life, man. Yeah, like, musically speaking. Because, you know, I, I had never played in LA, you know, you know, and uh, so I would be playing in LA uh, with, with a guy like him, you know, with a, with, a, with a legend like him, you know, in this very like demanding kind of music. So it was, it was tough, like psychologically, it was tough for me. And, uh, but you know, uh, kind of, you know, I knew that I really needed to learn the songs. I really you know, needed to like learn the songs because, um, Otherwise, I would be lost, man. Otherwise, I would be lost. So I, now, I you, you know, I don't, do I don't want to, I don't want to read charts. I, yeah, I, I don't, I know how to read charts, but it's, it's kind of awkward when you were on stage in a plane, like you know, yeah. reading charts. I don't like that. Yeah. And uh, so, like you know, I really need to learn the songs and memorize the songs and whatnot, so that I can be comfortable and confident to play live, you know, with, with the band. So that's that's what I did, man. I just, you know, <laughs> dude, I was I was almost dying, man. Like playing, <laughs> like trying to learn the songs and memorizing all those. But you know, look. So most people think that like the songs have a lot of different times signatures, but in fact, they don't. It's more of a it's more of a metric modulation thing, like so, a polyrhythmic kind of thing. Exactly. So most of the songs are in 4-4, but when you listen to it, it doesn't sound like 4-4. It sounds like something else. Yeah. But in reality, it's, it's you know, like, like, I would say like 80% of the stuff, it's 4-4. It's four four. And yeah. people are like, what the fuck is going on? Because, you know, he's playing all these different metric modulations over it. And it, it doesn't sound like 4-4. Four four. Yeah. It's, it's funny, man. It's funny to see like, people's faces in the show, like, they're like, you know, they, 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 they don't understand what's going on. They're like, like, what the fuck's going on? Man? I can't, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, so, it's so funny, man. That's great. It's so funny. And, you know, and, uh, you know, in the band, we were like, we, we know what's going on. And, uh, it's fun to see like people's reaction to, uh, to the music. It's, it's very intense. Yeah. It's, it's very intense, man. And, uh, not only, the songs are, are very intense, but he does a drum solo every night, like a 10 minute drum solo every night. And, you know, he's a, he's a very intense guy. And uh, dude, he's like, I think he's turning 62. This really? Year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, uh, the, you know, the, fu I, the fusion, the fusion uh, music has kept him young. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I learned a lot from him, not only musically, but also, you know, as a you know in this like healthy lifestyle and whatnot he's goddamn healthy man you know yeah. like he's 62 and he works out every day he runs i don't know how many miles a day and uh it's funny because like on the road you see how he eats it's so it's like you know first time that we we went on tour and uh i didn't know that he was like that so we would you know like uh, stop at some restaurant and eat and he would like eat on like leaves and and small you know like like nuts and whatnot and I was like dude is is that all that you're gonna eat yeah because you know i don't i don't like eating all those all that like heavy stuff and whatnot yeah yeah holy shit so he doesn't eat too much yeah he only you know eats like you know so it, it kind of impacted me as well you know yeah it's yeah. crazy man yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So what's on the horizon? Um, let's let's uh, just just assume that we can be back to normal in the next year or so. Um, outside of more touring, have you got I've, what what are you working on in the in the near future? Is it is it are you taking this time off to just relax and kind of decompress? Or are you uh, are you, you know, toiling away in in the laboratory to make a record? Like what what, what, what do you got on the on the horizon? Yeah. So right now, my my teaching abilities have been taken to a, a a whole new level because you know right now I'm working on ten books for a conservatory in in China. So I was I was hired because of MI. So last year um, we we went on tour in China, 
uh, and uh, so we got, you know, we kind of visit, we, uh, we visited all these different conservatories in China and whatnot. So we were hired to do these books for them. And uh, so that's what I'm working on right now. Dude, it's 10 books, so it's not easy to, you know, yeah. to make 10 books happen. And uh, so I've been doing that. And uh, I've been also working on my new instructional stuff. Nice. That is going to be released. So this is going to be my first uh, own uh, in, instructional stuff uh, in three languages. So I'm going to be doing English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be tough for me, yeah. And, 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 and all uh, of that content will be available on your website? Is that where you're going to sell A it? website, yeah. yeah. Can you tell, be, tell, yeah. tell everybody where, that, where they can get that. What is that? It's not out yet, so I, I'm still working on them. But, but the website, be available. Tell, tell people where they're. Yeah, so it's, no, it's just andrenieri.com. Okay, great. Yeah. And, uh, but also working on new videos, new music. But for next year, you know, it's, it's the same thing, man. We're just going to work on new, new music go, you know, and do more tourings and whatnot. I, I know I got to go back to LA and, and teach at MI as well. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing, but with more, with more intensity because you know, we, we're, we want to go on, on, on tour. I'm kind of tired to be at home all, all, uh, all the time. Right. I'm pretty sure you are too, man. Yeah, yeah like man. I, it's like, I was actually talking earlier today to uh, Mike Dawes, the acoustic player. Mike's yeah, yeah, yeah. player. And uh, I said, we were talking about the same thing. He's, he's at home in, in England. And we were talking about, man, uh, you know, it's like the most I've been home in like six years. You know, I'm, I'm always on tour, you know, and this is the most I've been home. So I think we're all kind of chomping at the bit for somebody to come up with, you know, some some miracle drug to get this thing out of here so we can all go back to our lives, you know. Hopefully we'll get it by the end of the year, but who knows, right? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And, so and that's why I'm working on all these instructional videos and whatnot, because that, you know, that, that is keeping me busy and, uh, it's, it's good stuff. You know, you know, I'll be like teaching other people, helping other people. And that's what I like to do. You know, that's yeah. what we do, man. That's what we as, do. as musicians, we help other people. That's right. And that's what we do, you know, with our music, with our, you know, videos, uh, lessons and whatnot, we just, we connect, to other people and we help them and we are helped. Um, so that's what we do, right? Yeah, that's and, it. Uh, that's it. And um, that's it. So touring, I want to tour again, man. I can't, I can't wait to hit the road. And uh, that's, you know, that's what I really want to do next year, you know, go, I want to do my own stuff too. Yeah. I, I, I want to go on the road with my band. I know right. it's hard. You've done it a couple yep. of times, right? Yep. And uh, we all know it's pretty hard to do that uh, it, it, on your own. It is. You know, it is. Uh, luckily, you know, um, the there's enough of us in the guitar community to put shows together with each other. You know, that's always a great, great angle. Um, and I, I tell you what, man, I can't wait to to an opportunity where my musical path and your musical path crosses again and we can do another show together at some point. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, thank you so much for being on the, the, the woodshed, man. I, I, I absolutely love your playing, man. And, uh, just it, it, for all the viewers out there, uh, man. Yeah. For all the viewers out there that haven't, um, uh, had a chance to check out some of your stuff, uh, not only just with Virgil, but some of your stuff, you know, definitely, definitely hit up AndreNieri.com. Check out his YouTube channel. Fabulous stuff, man. Uh, be safe, dude. Thank you again for being on the on the show, dude. Dude, you're the best, Andy. I mean, you you really have my heart, man. Not only as a guitar player, but as, as a human being as well. You're the best. So hopefully next year we can get together in person and do another show together. It's going to be sick. Man. Awesome, Thank buddy. Thanks, Andre. Thank you, Andy.